Okay, I said earlier on that the T-test helps you compare just two groups, and obviously male and female is a pretty common comparison of two groups. What do you do if you want to compare more than two groups? Perhaps you've got people, as I said earlier on, who come from three cities, and you want to compare their results, those who come from Bradford, those who come from Huddersfield, those that come from Leeds. Um, how do you do that? You've got three groups now. You can't do a T-test on that. The answer is to use ANOVA. A-N-O-V-A, short for Analysis of Variance. And ANOVA allows us, to, amongst other things, to compare three or more groups. You can actually compare four groups, five groups, and so on, if you want to. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to compare 20 groups. I mean, honestly, that, that won't, won't help you very well. But if you've got, you know, perhaps four or five groups, ANOVA is a good way of comparing those different groups. And in some ways, the process is very similar uh, to the t-test. In fact, mathematically, the t-test is equivalent to ANOVA using just two values, two, two levels. So um, the, you could say the t-test is actually a subset of the ANOVA itself. OK, so to do that, um, I think I've got just time to show you this one, four-minute video. How do you do an ANOVA? Uh, how do you compare more than two groups? in the same way. And again, remember the important point here is you need to look at the, the tables of means, particularly descriptive stats, to actually see what the differences were, which groups were bigger, which groups were smaller, and so on. Um, and then you can, you can actually then talk about what was going on in the data you got. The ANOVA, the, the statistical test, tells you whether you could have got that by chance or not, and therefore whether it's statistically significant, assuming it's taken from a, a sample from a, a broader population. OK, so let's um, go into that. OK, the one thing I'd say there is I would click a box that you didn't click to actually give the means, to give the descriptive statistics, because then you can see which, which dosage was, was the better than, and which was the worst. So I, I would always include a, a table of, of means or of descriptive statistics of some kind in addition to calculating the, 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 the statistic. Let me uh, show you what you get. I've, I've done a different test here. I've, I've used the same statistic, but different uh, data. This is going back to the bank data that you used in the very first lab session. So what I've got here is a large number of individuals, um, 474 actually altogether, and they're in different job categories. They're clerical, they're office trainee, security officer, and so on. And they're getting paid different salaries. And my, my question is, my hypothesis is, mm -hmm. Are there differences in the salaries of the different occupational groups, the different uh, groups of individuals? And we can see here, I've got a column, I've, I've ringed it in red, of the mean salaries. So the mean salary for the clerical workers, uh, this was some years ago, $11,000. Uh, office trainees, around about the same, about $11,000. Uh, security officers got paid a little bit more, average about $12,000. College trainees got a lot more, average of uh, $23,900 and so on. So you can see there are differences. There are some groups clearly getting different average salaries from other groups. The question is, if this was a sample drawn at random from a number of banks or from the you know, large bank and we, we sample 474 individuals, is this evidence that as a whole there are differences between the different salary groups, the different occupational groups? And that's what the ANOVA is telling us. We, we've got, in this case, what, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different groups. So we can use the ANOVA for that. We can't use a t-test, but we can use ANOVA. And this is the result we get at the bottom here on the screen. And I've ringed in red the, those significant numbers. So we actually found quite a large value for F. That's the actual statistic that's calculated, 171. And for us, SPS has calculated the, the p-value, the significance of that test. Again, it's a very small number. It's, it's probably not zero, but it's less than 0.05 anyway, that's for sure. In fact, it's less than 0.005, um, as we can talk about it. So it, it's, it's what we say highly significant here, um, and we can reject the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis being, in this case, that there are no differences. There are no differences between these groups. We can reject that, clearly reject it, there's very good evidence that there are differences between those groups. 
That's what the stats tell us. What the stats don't tell us is which groups are getting paid more, which groups are getting paid less. The stats just tell us that there is a difference. We couldn't have got it by chance. There's a real difference here. It, it isn't by chance. But what the difference is, we have to look back at the table of means. That's why I always produce a table of means as well. And in this case, you can see clearly the differences are because the technical group is very highly paid at $36,000 a year in comparison with the clerical and the office trainees and perhaps the security officers, which are on roughly a, a third of that salary. So you can see, you know, to know what the differences are, you need the table of means. But to see whether that difference is statistically significant, in other words, you couldn't have got it by sheer chance, there is really something going on here. You need the stats to do that. Another way of displaying the means is on a means plot. And this is an option you can tick. If you look in the, the boxes of options you get on a, an analysis of variance, uh, a means plot is one of them. And here's the means plot for that data set. And I think it's quite interesting to look at this too. What it's done here across the x-axis are the different groups, the different employee groups, the different occupational groups, if you like. And up the, the y-axis is what the salary is. And what's plotted on here is the means for these groups. So the mean clerical salary was, I said, about 11,000. It's down here. Same as office trainees, very similar to security officers. But you can see you then get a step upwards for the, uh, what are they? The college trainees, the exempt employees, and the MBA trainees. And then the, the, the most well-paid group, the, the technical group. So in fact, you've got three salary levels in this particular organization. You've got the low paid, the middle paid, and, and the very high paid technical people. So the, the, the means plot actually is quite interesting to, to show visually those differences. You can see that from the numbers too, but there's a visual way of presenting that. Mm -hmm.